I'm going to try and combine the first and the second ones to see what kind of edge I can get from those. Those two make an even bigger edge. Those two make a significant edge. So when you learn to trade, we talked about the edge that I had on my oil, for example, at 12 o'clock here. This is a one minute chart. And I suggested that I had a very, very solid edge to buy into these three trades. If I buy into those three trades on oil, this buy went up, this buy went up, this buy went up. I made a fortune, right? You may say you never made a fortune at all. We went from 82s to 92s, so I made $100. It only took me two minutes, guys. We went from 82s to a high price of 95s. I made another $100. This time it took me five or six minutes. And I bought again here at 84s, and that traded up to 08s. That made me $300. So over this period here, I made $500 profit per contract in 30 minutes. Per contract, $500 profit per contract. During the same time, my maximum drawdown was one tick. One single tick. Is that an edge? that you think you can take to the bank. Is that an edge that with a drawdown of $10, I've been able to make $500 maximum swing? I'm not saying you're gonna make the maximum swing. We, we obviously always agree that the maximum swing is simply that, the maximum swing. But let's assume your target is $10, uh, 10 ticks. Let's assume your stop is five ticks. You would have made $300 on those three trades, no stops. You would have won 100% of your trades, no stops. Let's assume you put your stops to break even after five ticks, no stops. So you'd have made $300 profit. If you can do that every time you trade half an hour, you're going to be a very, 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 very wealthy trader. You're going to be a very wealthy trader. And it's also in line with inflation break evens which is the red line, John. So it's also in line with inflation break-evens, which makes it even better than good because you're trading with a macro narrative storyline. So you can say, well, I don't need the inflation break-evens, but of course it helps me. What else could you trade with? Well, we don't have big volume surges, so that's a bit of a pity. I'd love to see big volume in this candle. I'd love to see big volume in this candle. And I'd love to see big volume in this candle. The reason we don't get it, of course, is because we don't get stops at the bottom edge. We don't get stop runs. We don't get stop runs. So when we go back into this, we start looking for the very good. You can already see that there's a very good trade here, isn't there? By looking in the background of these trades, you can start seeing the outstanding, can't you? There's an outstanding trade there. Maybe saying, yeah, but there was other ones, wasn't there, Ray? Well, yes, there's always other ones. There's always things that maybe you see, but I'm always relating the purple line size on the last candle to the blue line size on the last candle. That should always be the final decision-making part of this process, Nick. If the purple line is making a higher high, but the candle isn't the most explosive, but the blue line isn't making a higher high, but the blue line is explosive, I am not going to take that trade, even though the divergence is there. So the purple line has to be 100% crystal clearly more explosive than the blue line at every time we take this trade, every time. So for example, I could easily see that that purple line is a lot more explosive and it's making a new high. The bigger the divergence, the better the trade. So we start recognizing that the divergence size is incredibly valuable to me. And that's something that I can start banking on. You may say, but surely, therefore, this is going to be a sell trade. Yes, it would be. This would definitely go into your books as a possible sell trade. Absolutely. Any other ones? Well, we could argue that there was an, an opportunity very clearly here. It was still into the lows. The blue lines actually started to go up. So that makes it a very obvious sell trade opportunity there as well. 
So we've already done three winning trades. Let's see what happens on this sell trade here. Let's see what happens on this sell trade here. And let's see what that happens on this buy trade. Let's see if those trades make any sense. The sell trade turns out to be the top tick price. You couldn't make it up, could you? Turns out to be the top tick price. You get a perfect swing away from the top edge from 24s, and the initial swing finishes at zero twos. You make your hundred dollars, your 10 tick target without any without any trouble whatsoever. Now this buy trade doesn't work. This buy trade doesn't work, but when you think about that buy trade, what was against the buy trade? Why did this buy trade that looks like it should work, why did it not work? Because the inflation break evens were very bearish. So in other words, by filtering in the idea of the inflation break evens divergence, it allows us to make better decisions into these areas. And because the inflation break evens were making consistent lower lows when this trade showed up, I wouldn't take that trade. But whilst I wouldn't take that trade, I'm now recognizing that the skew is bullish. If I'm now recognizing that the skew is bullish, I just need to see the purple line increasing by more than the blue line into a low price on bonds and I, uh, into a low price on oil, and I can start buying oil. When the red line starts rising, and I see that the purple line makes a higher, a, a bigger move than the blue line, the blue line's hardly moving off the bottom edge. The difference between those two is quite significant. If I wanted to, I could buy oil here and have a very high probability of success. It's not a trade in, according to a systematic signaling process, of course. It doesn't achieve that quality. But in terms of trading, I think it's almost a no-brainer opportunity to start buying oil in this area, area when the value line changes. And I start buying up some oil in here. Now, in terms of profit and loss, if I bought some oil there at 96s, the trade traded a low price of 88s. So I would have lost eight ticks on that trade. So if I'm trading 10 by 10, 10 profit, 10 loss, I would have made my 10 tick profit. If I'm trading 10 tick profit and a five tick loss, I would have taken a five tick loss, okay? So what? So what? Doesn't make any difference. It's a probability, guys. And the probability is based upon these ideas. 10 tick target, 10 tick stop. We've had 100% winners today. 100% winners. We obviously have to understand that with that stop of 10 ticks, we're going to be suffering potentially $100 losses when a $100 loss hits. And that's okay. Sometimes if it's not okay, then obviously you can't afford a $100 loss. Then you have to use maybe some other tools to get it a little bit closer. Some other tools like uh, order flow, like dealer levels, like liens, like uh, Voltics, like uh, POCs of candlesticks. So when we start this process of learning and understanding these as ideas, we can see that this is just a barrel load of sell opportunities. Now remember, the purple line has to be stronger than the blue line, so that doesn't qualify as a stronger purple line beside this one. This does. The purple line is making lower lows. It's also dropping faster. So these are two sellable opportunities on, on bond, uh, oil, two sellable opportunities on oil here and here. The first sale actually made money. It dropped from 25 to 15s. From 25 to 15s, guys, you actually made your 10 tick target. And if you didn't quite make your 10 tick target, you obviously ended up scratching at plus one, and that's okay. Fair enough, no danger. Your second sale had the maximum drawdown from 31s to 33s. You had a maximum drawdown of two ticks. And you had a maximum profit of $500. 50 ticks maximum profit on that trade. 50 ticks maximum profit. And you had the inflation break evens in your favor. 
couldn't get any better than those sellable opportunities. You couldn't get any better than that huge volume. You couldn't get any better than taking a trade at two o'clock in the afternoon, which happens to also be the NYMEX Open, which happens to be an area that you know is going to be a brilliant trade opportunity because of the sheer volumes, which you know is going to have so many leans in that area that it's going to be embarrassing if you miss that trade. And when you look at that trade in the order flow charts, you can already recognize the big pink voltic at the very top tick price for the first sell trade that made 10 ticks. There it is there, there's your lean, there's your profit. And then when the second trade shows up and you get that huge 73 lot top line price and another voltic and there's your second trade and there's your $500 profit. There's your $500 profit. That's how you make your money. $500, guys. If you're using five tick stops, you've just paid for the next 10 trades. You've just paid for 10 losses. You've just paid your way for 10 trades. 10 trades, the chances of you losing 10 trades in a row using this process are almost zero. In other words, the chances of you finishing your day after that big winning trade, finishing your day with a losing book is almost zero. Isn't that a strong piece of information to work with? It's a huge benefit, huge. So when we start recognizing these as opportunities, where's the next opportunity? Well, the next opportunity we'd imagine is this one here, but that's not obvious. Why is that not obvious, guys? Why is that not an obvious buy trade on oil? We've got a very strong divergence by absolutely uh, drawing some straight lines or angled lines across these. We've got a very strong divergence, but why is it not an obvious buy trade on oil? Yeah, the purple line is a lot less aggressive than the blue line, isn't it? The purple line is a lot less aggressive than the blue line. So it should be a buy trade on oil. There's a high probability that it is a buy trade on oil. High probability, but it's not as good as it could be. So it's definitely a good trade, Theo. It's definitely a good trade. I would 100% take the trade every time I see it. 100% of the time I would take that trade going. But it's not a good trade. It's, a, it's not a great trade. It's a, just a good trade. When we look at these, this is when we start recognizing there's a good trade there as well. The blue line, the purple line goes up and the blue line goes down. So that's obviously going to be a good trade. It would be better if the purple line was making a higher high, but it's not. So it's just a good trade. But I can recognize that I'm almost guaranteed to make money on these two trades as buys. But they're still not brilliant, are they? Likewise, I can already recognize that this also is a high probability buy opportunity right there. High probability buy trade right there. When we look at this, we can see whether these trades actually did turn out to be good trades. The buy trade on this candle went up, the buy trade in this candle went up, and the buy trade in this candle went up. Three winning trades. Drawdown of zero on that trade. A drawdown on this trade of zero on that trade. And a drawdown on this trade of an entry at 86, a low price of 84, a drawdown of two ticks. Two. Two ticks, guys. A profit on this 86, finally trading up at 73 handle for 14 ticks profit. In other words, I would have made $300 on those three trades with a maximum drawdown of just $20. Over 10 to 1 
my money. 10 to 1 my money. 10 to 1 my money usually means you've got a 10% probability, right? If you're getting 10 to 1 your money, you would normally be expecting that to come from a 10% probability because obviously that's where you get your 10 to 1 your money because you've only got a 1 in 10 chance of making any money. But if you're winning 50, 60, 70, 80, 90% of the time and you're getting 10 to 1 the money, guys, there's no physical way on the planet that you can ever be a losing trader. Unless you overpay on these trades, you will never be a losing trader ever by the end of a day. Never once. I've never once finished a day trading this where I've lost money. Never once. And I've been trading for 40 years. 40 years. Never once have I lost money trading this process. I've lost on individual trades, of course. I've never finished a day with a losing day. Everybody loses trades. That's not what we're seeing. That is not what we're seeing. What we're seeing is that if you start building out your process, if you start trading the process that you're building out, if you recognize that whatever it is you're doing is providing you with an edge, what you're trying to do from that point onwards is improve your edge. That's it. Simply improve your edge. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, guys? Makes a lot of sense. As a USD.